a true spiritual life, well, in fact, a true life, a life lived truly. or a life lived happily or a life lived joyously or a life lived free of tension and stress or a life lived most intimately or a life lived with such ease and effortless is a God-made life rather than a man-made life. It is a second birth life rather than a first birth life. It's a different disposition, the one that is lived happily, joyously, intimately, delightfully, mysteriously, freely, most because is God made, like unto the open hand, is easy, it really is. The usual man's life is full of dis-ease, full of problems and concerns, all unnecessary. It's the first birth stuff of anxiety, tension, doubt, seeking, beliefs. It's a life full of reactivity, of non-intimacy, of non-love. It's a life of being stimulated and consoled. It's a life of depending on others to make you happy, depending on things to make you happy. It's a life of dilemma. It's a life of irritation and frustration. It's a life of aggressiveness. That first birth stuff is not at all a pleasant way of living. The second birth disposition is easeful, happy, joyous, delightful, intimate, free of reactivity, free of all that first birth nonsense. It's only seen to be nonsense when you are in the right place. One becomes God-possessed rather than self-possessed. One inherently knows, without all this mental knowledge in the head, is an inherent knowledge. One is more, one is simply intuitive. In the second birth place, one feels at home under all circumstances. One sees the conditions of life as the play of God. No matter what is arising from this disposition of the open hand, there is an inherent embracement It's what I call already happiness. It's already the case before anything is added to it. It 
in that second place, second birth place, the disposition is restfulness, peacefulness, no aggression. So to be free of the first birth stuff of what I said earlier, anxiety, tension, problems, concerns, reactivity, to be free of all of that, one has to understand the root cause of all of that. Because that root cause is, is at the root of first birth stuff and that root cause is separation is the separative act is the act of like the clenched fist you are actually contracting from one's true nature the God state the God place. That contraction is not necessary. So you might try to get rid of doubt, rid of anxiety. You might like to try and get rid of all your reactivity, your history, your past, your childishness, your adolescent behaviour. No, it doesn't work. You cannot get rid of any of that. What you've got to do is to stop doing the root course of all of that. It's a simple analogy. If I pinch my skin, the root course of the blueness there, the root course of the pain, the root course of that pinch, Oh, sorry, the results of that is the results of the pinch. Take away the pinch, then all that disappears. And that's exactly what the second birth is about. Being free of the root cause, which is a self-contraction. Contraction from the God state the divine state, the place or the state that has always existed. You don't have to call it God. You don't have to call it the divine. You can call it the place that has always been the case before you were born and after you are dead. That place has existed because it was never born and will never die. Once you're in that place, let's call it the divine place, then the body-mind is simply a vehicle of expression, God's expression. There's no self-consciousness. There's nothing to do with small s self. First birth stuff is narcissistic. First birth is all about dwelling on yourself. Pondering on this, that and the other. It doesn't get you anywhere. So a true spiritual life is a life where your body-mind is no longer contracted. The body-mind is no longer at the mercy of the self-contraction. When you're living free of the self-contraction, I say when you are living, when the body-mind is allowed to live without the self-contraction, then there is simply love bliss happiness, joy, delight, is already the case. Understand those three words, already the case. Already. Not 
You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to seek. It's already the case. It's like water is already wet. It's only because of the self-contraction and living like a clenched fist that you think and you feel that the God state is somewhere else. So you have to seek for it. No. You just have to stop doing as I indicated earlier, the pinch. No pinch, then it's just a body-mind of happiness. And then wherever you are, you are intimate with that set of conditions. And then you are free to discern. You are free to play with that set of conditions, if you like, to be part of that set of conditions. Conditional existence comes and goes like the clouds, but you remain stable as that open hand disposition. And then you will realise that all that first birth stuff was like a dream. <clears throat> it wasn't necessary. Just like the pinch is not necessary. Also, you will realise, once you're in that place, that you stand alone. That there's no one that you need to make you happy. Because you are already happy. And you see clearly what is necessary and what's not necessary in order to live. Rather than being needy, you see what's necessary and you take it from there. So, it's necessary that this body mind then you, you you start living understanding that the body mind is if you like is like a like a car you see what's necessary the car isn't needy you see what's necessary So you, you see the body-mind as a vehicle of expression. You see that it requires a particular diet to survive. It requires water. It requires sunlight. However, there's no telling whether the body will become diseased. There's no telling. You can have the most perfect of diets and the body contracts cancer. You can be a smoker all your life and still live to 102. There are many cases. They say, gosh, and he, sm he smoked all his life. And look at him. He's still alive at 102. Whereas someone else will smoke and die at the age of 50. There's no telling. There's, there's, 
there's many factors and some of them are mysterious invisible if you like we can't tell how long the body mind is going to survive and to live but the body mind if lived by God is pleasurable It's a pleasurable existence. My teacher used to say, when you're in this place, the open hand is position, then no matter what is arising, that moment is pleasurable. Pleasurable oneness, you see. There's no division. There's no you and me. There's no me against you. There's no you against me. There's just this oneness. When, there, when there's not two, there's peace. Not two. You're at one with everything that's arising. So that place of the open hand disposition is what a true spiritual life is, the life of the spirit. The, sec the second birth is this pleasurable, heaven-like, nirvana-like disposition. It's already the case. The first birth stuff is like a dream, it's, and it's nonsense. If you want to continue living like that, fine, and continue doing the self-contraction. But there is something that has to be understood. You cannot stop doing the self-contraction by, by trying to stop doing the self-contraction. It's quite simple really. Don't dwell on it. Remove your attention and put your attention together with feeling, feeling attention. That's the ingredient. You remove it from off yourself and you put your feeling attention on that which you love. And that's got to be the sun. You've got to find the sun of your life. S-U-N. That brightness beyond the clouds. Once you've found the sun, then you remain with the sun. And for me, it's been my teacher, Adidas Samraj, for many years now. He has been my son. And by living a life with him, my life is one of joy, happiness, stillness, peacefulness. It's the way of the heart. It's the way of intimacy. It's the way of already being in relationship. Here's a picture of Adidas Samraj. So if you know of a way to go from here, the clenched fist, to the open hand, fine. Find that way and stay with it. For me, it's communion with the God man, Adidas Samraj.
Jesus came to be the God-man 2,000 years, but he wasn't accepted. The God-men, there have been many, simply say, turn away from your first birth stuff. Turn away, surrender it all by falling in love with me. And in that relationship, all this dross, all this crap just falls away quite naturally and easily. You haven't got to do anything about it. You haven't got to be psychoanalyzed. You haven't got to go into your dark space and consider it all. You don't have to interpret all your dreams. You don't have to keep going back into your history and, and wondering what your parents did and all that. It's all nonsense. It all falls away in this love relationship. It's like you're feeling cold. You don't do anything about the coldness. You simply turn the fire on. You see? And the fire warms you up. But you didn't do anything about the cold. You have an ice cube. The ice cube isn't doing anything to melt itself. It simply melts when it's given some heat. You see? I always say, self forget. Forget yourself. Forget it all. Simply turn to me. And when you turn to me, this is what they say, all these spiritual teachers, they say, turn to me. In Sanskrit, it's called satsang. In our language, it's simply called Holy Communion. So by turning to me, you are forgetting your first birth stuff. And that me that you're turning to is your true self. Because it's not the body of Adidas Samraj in this case, or the body of Jesus. It's, it's what's prior. It's the state. It's the disposition. Anyway, I can't. It's not a case of trying to convince someone or not. You have to. It authent authenticates itself. But the important thing is to understand that this first birth stuff, this self-contraction, is at the root, is at the root of your seeking for a better life. Everybody on this earth, everybody is doing the self-contraction. It's the dis-ease of mankind. The only way not to do the self-contraction is to be in this, if you like, heaven place, this pleasurable oneness place. And to be there is a graceful happening. It's not man-made. It's God-made. It's joy, happiness and delight. And then you can be happy with everybody and everything. It's a capital H happening. It's not a man-made happiness. It's a disposition. That really has to be understood. So there's no competition, there's no war. It's not me against you anymore, or you against me. And when you're in this disposition, you simply allow. There's no way. You just allow. You allow everyone to have their points of view. You don't argue or toss with anybody. If you are both in this disposition, then you can have a, a, a happy exchange. A really happy exchange. 
because from this disposition no one is right and no one is wrong. From this disposition no one is superior and no one is inferior. From the open hand disposition there is only, only a pleasurable oneness with everything that is arising. And then you'll go through life responding to the conditions of life, not reacting. There's a heck of a difference. The clenched fist reacts, always reacting, it's never happy, never always seeking happiness. If he does feel happiness, it's temporary, because it's a heavy clench. This clenching is not good from this perspective. So become, give your body-mind over to God. A plant needs to be looked after. A car needs to be looked after. Mechanical things need to be looked after. While the body-mind is just a mechanical thing, it's a machine. It needs looking after. But look after, for, look after from this disposition of great clarity. You see clearly what is, what is needed. You discern. Thank you for listening. Hope that helps. And please understand that your life is based and driven by the self-contraction and less you're in satsang, unless you're in divine communion. And then you live a, an unselfish, an unconditional life of love and happiness. Already the case. You haven't got to manufacture it. It really is effortless. It's the best way to live. If you want to chat with me, then do. I choose happiness. I choose the open hand disposition. The clenched fist disposition is ugly. It's always at war with one another. You're always wanting someone to make you happy always wanting something to make you happy. Always. Even saying some, even saying good morning to someone, you're wanting that person to say something back to you. The, all, the clenched fist disposition is always manipulating. Always. You want to be satisfied. You want to be consoled. You want to know the truth. You want a belief system. You want to belong somewhere. You want everything. Want, 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 always. You can't simply just be happy. You want the weather to change. You're always complaining about the weather. You want in your bills to be lessened. Always complaining about the price of this and price of that. That doesn't mean when you're in the open hand disposition, you don't see all that. Of course you see it all. But there's, there's a lot of things we are unable to do anything about. There's if there's something I can do about it, then fine. But it comes from this response, this love response.
is already having response. One sees clearly that in order to create something, something has to be destroyed. For if you wish to live free of all that clenched fist disposition nonsense, with no scaffolding holding you up, so the body-mind becomes God's. If you wish to live free of all that nonsense, seeing it as a dream, then you've got to change your act, change where you put your attention. Your attention. Give your attention over. Forget yourself and remember God in the form of the God mind. And then grace will take you over. It's a sacrifice. It's a surrendering. It's surrendering of your feeling attention. That's got to be activated. And then there's a stillness, a joy, a happiness beyond all first birth, clenched fist stuff. It's beyond all of that. And life becomes a bit of a mystery. You see, from this disposition, we don't really know what anything is. From the clenched fist disposition, people want to be knowers. I know, I know, I'm right, you're wrong. Not that nice, pleasant way to live. So why not read some of the teachings and listen to some of the teachings of Adidas Samraj, where he will help you to understand the first birth, clenched fist stuff. Narcissistic stuff. Thank you for listening. You have to understand what the divine disposition is. Already the case. It's a blank piece of paper and anything, anything whatsoever can be written or drawn on that blank piece of paper. And then people identify with what's written and draw. But it's the blank piece of paper that matters. That's the prior condition. The blank piece of paper is always there, no matter what's written on it. Anything can be written on it. Think of all the religions in the world. They all have what they are about written on a piece of paper. But it's the blank piece of paper that matters. It's prior to all of what's been written. That's the God state. The God state is prior. And the fruits of the God state are already love, already happiness, already tolerance, already joy, already peace, already restfulness, already feeling at home. Well, Jesus said, love God first. Don't love your neighbour first. Love God first. And then you will automatically love your neighbour. If you're happy with your lot, if you're happy living like a clenched fist, if you're happy to get irritated and frustrated and forlorn and sad and 
sorrowful and full of doubt and full of anxiety and they're happy with all that and continue living like that as they say the devil you know it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't know fair enough but i don't want to live like that like a clenched fist bombarding like like ammunition <laughs> Alida says, love me. Love me first. And from this place there's great strength, there's great energy. From this place one works miracles, as it were. From this place there's no limitations. Thank you for listening.